hello and welcome back to my channel today we are swatching a color that um, it has taken a long time to me to understand how to use but that uh, i find myself using more and more especially in portraits and it is a caput mortum the dad's head in latin and um, i have different brands including some uh, Mars Violet um, that um, is more or less the same color and uh, let's go swatching it. I'm Elisabetta, your friends with a passion for art supplies and uh, can't wait to compare these different brands. I have only used the uh, Lucas so far. I love these uh, chunky tubes and I have uh, squeezed, uh, wait, I'll show you. This is, uh, this is my portrait palette where I keep uh, colors that I use for portraits. So I have added some colors that I had included in my first version. So I might, for instance, uh, take out uh, some reds uh, that are too similar, but I have added some Caput Mortum here, some Venetian red, uh, some uh, uh, Rose Doré and some Magenta here. Mm, basically, that's, uh, that's my main usage for uh, Caput Mortum. And I have only used the Lucas here, so I don't know if it is uh, a difference across brands or not so very curious to find out with you i sometimes uh, ask myself why am i doing this youtube thing and the answer is i have um, most of my friends are not interested in watercolor those who are are not interested in pigments so when i want to talk pigments uh, i just see a blank uh, face uh, a blank look uh, in uh, my friend's eyes so i thought that maybe online it was easier to find people that uh, share my passion and it is actually because uh, there's a uh, they're cutting a tree in a nearby garden so probably there will be some noise be patient thank you so we start with um, Winsor and newton sorry for the noise in the background it's been like uh, three days that they're cutting trees. It doesn't stop. You know that I always start with uh, Winsor and Newton. As I think it's benchmark. As you know, it is a Latin expression, caput mortum. And it means uh, dead head. Uh, Winsor and Newton calls it caput mortum violet. Almost all caput mortum are made with PR101 in a very opaque, uh, dark uh, version. You know that the PR101 is very versatile and uh, can really be very different um, according to the production process. This is very opaque, but I want to Water it down, should be granulating. Okay, very beautiful, the dark violet. I use it in portraits because for the warm shadows is perfect. And also it's very nice color for lips, especially on darker skins. Sennelier, Sennelier, brand new. I usually like very much Sennelier. It might have uh, it might have some um, binders problems sometimes, binders issues, but not this time. No, yes. Actually, it's quite typical of Sennelier of um, having um, binders issues, but uh, it doesn't really bother me more than that because um, they're made with honey and it's typical now. <laughs> My hands are unwatchable, just one moment. 
Okay, so I had uh, Caput Mortum everywhere. Let's see the difference. Still uh, PR101, so same pigment. First impression is that uh, they look very much the same. Maybe slightly more transparent, but it's too soon to say so. I really need to see it uh, dry. And the sensation of painting with Sennelier, if you overcome the fact that there might be binders issue, it's always fantastic because it's a very pleasant sensation to use uh, paint made with honey. At least I really like it. It's very subjective, it's very personal, but I do love it. Lucas. Now, Lucas is made with uh, PR101 and Mars Black PBK11 which should accentuate the granulation. I really love these uh, chunky tubes. They make me feel that I'm not wasting paint. I can just uh, play around. And this is the one that I have in my portrait palette. Very, very opaque, of course. It's warmer. I think it's more brownish compared to the previous ones. This is definitely more violet. The Sennelier and the Wizard and Newton as well. But it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Yes, very different, more brown, but beautiful. Then White Nights, White Nights is a brand that I started with. Okay, wow. White Nights was uh, probably my first um, artist brand that I bought. Great uh, value for money, great price. But then I kind of stopped using it um, a couple of years ago after the war. I, was, I felt uh, not right, but uh, definitely a good brand with a good value for money. This is also warmer looks more like uh, lucas it's pr101 you see how different can be pr101 really depends on the process you know that winsor newton also make uh, a beautiful burnt sienna with pr101 it's my favorite actually burnt siennas i had already a video but i want to make a new one because i have a larger collection now then I have Turner. Turner um, is a brand that I have bought during a sale. I haven't swatched it yet, so I don't know much what to expect. It's a Japanese brand and Japanese um, paint usually is very performing. I like this um, look, a bit uh, 20th century. It's very old looking like uh, it looks like uh, a paint from the 50s, the 60s of last century. Yeah, wow, beautiful, beautiful. Very nice to use. Same feeling that I had with Sennelier. I'm not sure it's made with honey. I have to check out. But the feeling is uh, very nice, very good dispersion on paper. <music> Then I have Roman Schmal, still new, brand new, you see, and uh, I'm making a palette of uh, Roman Schmal muted tones. So I bought uh, quite a few. I will swatch them in future during the sale. And they use PR102, which is the natural version of PR101. PR101 being red iron oxide and PR02 is the natural red iron oxide. So nice, this uh, label, and I love the full pants, really love them. You know, Roman Schmal is famous for re-wetting instantly. Wow, it does uh, re-wet instantly. It's so thick. I haven't pre-wetted it. 
this is uh, slightly different from the others it's more red less violet it's interesting it's very interesting i think that for lips this one is a perfect color maybe more than pr 101 so i hope you can see on screen the difference these are definitely more violet they look very much the same but this caput mortum has a kind of pinkish undertone which is very beautiful then i have a surprise i have a della magna caput mortum and it is a pr 101 look at how beautiful it's the wrapped pan it's like a chocolate so luca from della magna was so kind to send me this um, with an order as a gift thank you luca but he knows i'm always totally transparent when i and uh, when i swatch my colors and they make my reviews very easy to rewet mineral pigments or natural pigments are not so always so easy to rewet and this is incredibly pigmented and uh, opaque so very easy to rewet this one as well bravo it's very staining i keep uh, washing my hands like i have washed my hands like three or four times already during this video beautiful very very pigmented very pretty i don't see a lot of difference they look different when they're wet but once they dry except for roma schmal they are definitely very similar and then i have one more surprise which is da vinci and this is part of the embrace opacity set that i also received from my husband thank you marco his name is marco and that i will soon swatch and review incredibly easy to rewet these two i have really fallen in love with da vinci paint i understand why it is so popular in america such a shame that it's not available here in europe i think there's a problem with um, brushes because we have brushes named da vinci i think it's the same group as the schminke so i think that might be a problem they should come out with a different european brand slightly different this one the da vinci they're all it's more granulating okay we let them dry ah no 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 I also wanted to swatch, I'm not sure that it fits in, but it's a PR101 and as I have it, I have bought it, I couldn't wait to swatch it and it is Terra Rosa by M. Graham. Yeah, it's more Venetian red. I will swatch it again uh, when I make a comparison of uh, English or Venetian reds. Not sure of the difference between the two. Yes, no, it's not a, a mouse violet. Mm, why did I swatch it here? Okay, so we let this dry and uh, I'll come back. As usual, while uh, my paint dries, we try some mixes. And uh, for the mixes, I will use uh, white lights for a change. And I will mix it with my usual Paul Rubens that uh, I'm using much less than uh, before now because I have so many paints that uh, I'm not reaching out so often for Paul Rubens, but it's okay. Lemon yellow. Cadmium yellow. Indian yellow Orange whips Orange cadmium hue 
this is uh, caput mortum pure scarlet. The red, the yellow. And this is Queen Acridon Violet. The Oxus in Violet. They're all very dark. Cobalt Blue. It's great for darkening colors. French Ultramarine. Russian blue, Sallow blue, Cerulean blue, PD thirty six, Yellow green. Tree green, tree green, hookers green, it mutes down the greens, sallow green. Yellow ochre. Wow. Pozzuoli red ochre. Burn sienna. Amber, but it's more, I think, a person. Burnt brown. Paints gray. Cold black. Now, while we wait uh, for this to dry, I will. Uh, Try just a very elementary portrait to make it very simple, advanced swatching, just to show you how you ha just to show you how I use uh, Caput Mortun in shadows and lips. Okay, let's go to my little sketch.
Okay, now we let dry this uh, small portrait. It's from imagination, just a face that I have imagined using standard measures. You see that I have used. Uh, you see that I have used only caput mortum for shadows. I have used an orange, a peach tone with yellow and scarlet for basic skin tone, and just added some caput mortum for uh, the shadows, then yellow ochre and. Uh, dioxazine violet for all the hair but basically look at the shadows they're just wonderful and a little scarlet for the nose and the cheeks but shadows with the um, caput mortum are as i like to say are just like cheating right it's too easy okay let's go to the mixes and the swatches they should be dry don't please look at the, these Cover it up because it doesn't really fit. I have caput mortum everywhere. I'm sorry because the Senelier was leaking. First of all, uh, first impression is that they're all absolutely very, very, very similar. There are some colors that are completely different across brands and some colors that really have almost no difference. I see some difference uh, in the Roman Schmann, which is slightly more pinkish, but otherwise some are cooler, like the La Magna. Some are definitely violet, like uh, Capo de Mortum by Senelier, Winsor & Newton, Lucas. Da Vinci is uh, slightly more granulating, slightly more transparent, I would say. Turner is slightly warmer, but the differences are really, really minuscule. When I find colors that really don't differ from one brand to the other, I say it's a nice color to have. If you do portraits, it's a must have for me. Do, do buy it if you don't have it, but buy whatever is cheaper, whatever is available. Not much difference across brands. I am a collector, so I like to have all brands. I'm using uh, a lot of these Caput Morton, so no problem for me. It will last a couple of generations, but um, they're all beautiful. It's a fantastic color to have. Let's go to the mixes. Okay, as per the mixes, um, it is a fantastic color to mute down uh, other colors. Look at the, for instance, uh, green, how it mutes them down, or the burn sienna, it darkens the red, but be careful because it's very, very strong. It's very staining. I know after the catastrophe of uh, Senelier, and um, it is very opaque, it is very dark, it is very pigmented. So use it with care when you mix it just to very, very sparingly because it is overwhelming. It is absolutely overwhelming. Um, you get almost uh, pitch black if mixed with the uh, dioxazine violet and uh, very dark blues. Look at the ultramarine, very lovely muted green, but once again, sparingly, sparingly. You can mute down yellows, but... Um, it's a bit dangerous because you can kill the other colors, but it's interesting to mix. So if you use it sparingly, for instance, if you use it in portraits, you can mix it with the other colors to give more um, a cohesive look to the whole portrait. And uh, this is what I would do if I had a whole painting. I would, for instance, use this uh, Caput Mortum for clothes or maybe background so that I would give a cohesive look. As per the portrait, as I said, this is completely from imagination and uh, just uh, to understand how to use this. As I said, I have mixed uh, a peach tone with uh, scarlet and yellow. Then I have used only Caput Mortum for shadows, only Caput Mortum, pure. Um, yellow ochre, violet and some brown for hair and Caput Morton mixed with a tiny bit of uh, Mother Red or Aliza in Crimson for lips. And some Cerulean for the eyes. Well, what do you think? I think that for shadows, it's so beautiful that uh, it is almost like cheating. I used also a little scalp for the nose, but um, it's easy to make shadows with, um, 
with this color I, I would really it's completely underrated color i really really recommend you to give it a try if you do portraits or maybe there are other usages and now it's the usual question do you use caput mortum what do you use it for i'm really curious because um it's a, it's, it's a bit unusual color. It's uh, not uh, in standard palettes and uh, you really have to buy it and want it so that um, you must know how to use it. This is the way I use it, but I'm curious to know how you use it, what brand you have as usual. And thanks for commenting. Thanks a lot for having watched this video with me. I love comparing brands. Let me know if you like this type of video and if you do, Couple more to everywhere. And if you do, just give me a like or maybe subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much.